back in the Canaries on the island of La Palma. A month in, the deadly aerial threat is changing the atmosphere. As new craters erupt, there's a climate of fear. The air is thick with ash clouds. Volcanologist and rock specialist, Professor Valentin Troll, is one of the first on location. Hello, hello. We are in La Laguna. Inside the evacuated area. So here, a very quick impression from a little kindergarten here. That is, of course, in the evacuated zone, so all kids have left. But this is kind of nice because uh, we see a bit of ash deposits here. First thing that really um, struck me was the volcano itself. It had grown to a considerable size by then, and it sits above uh, the villages of Tacande and La Laguna and El Paso. There was this rather big edifice with fire fountains coming out. The island, like a pressure valve, releasing molten lava as it did when the island was formed. I think my closest comparison is uh, like a, a first world war battle scene. There is loads of people going backwards and forwards, police is going this way, emergency rescue teams going that way, animal rescue teams going yet another way. People have gas masks. Here or there, you can hear the cracking and crumbling. And then uh, once the lava heats up the piping in the house or hits a gas tank, you get these random explosions here or there in the exclusion zone and you're just, whoa. It's like a battlefield. It's a chance for a Valentin to get up close to giant crawling lava lobes. You really see that the upper crust is rolling over and it's coming down at the front of it and the whole thing is moving towards you. When it's safe, temperatures are tested. What's the maximum that goes up? The maximum is 500. Oh, I see. The steps are 500. It's still very, very hot. So we hope that we can uh, get one of those blocks here quenched in a few minutes. Oh, beautiful. And rock samples taken. But the air is unbreathable and deadly. You must be equipped with gas mask because there's um, a lot of uh, fumes coming out, a lot of gas is being expelled from the lava flow, and there's a lot of also fumes from burning. You get a lot of toxic fumes, so you really need to be protecting yourself. The lethal atmosphere is not the only airborne danger. Suddenly, we saw these large blocks rolling down the hill, and these were bombs that were thrown out uh, from the volcanic summit. Here's another block coming down. And it's red hot, at least in part, and it's coming at enormous speed. And then they were uh, traveling ballistically, or they were rolling down the hill like cannonballs. So that the outer shell was uh, lava, rock colored, but the interior was still glowing. It was just an amazing phenomenon. Oh my Lord. Yeah, oh yeah, I can feel the heat from here. Yeah. As the days roll by, the volcano summit is growing. British volcano explorer Chris Horsley is right in the middle of it. You can feel the tremors run through the ground. As soon as that goes, you feel the aftershocks come right through you. <laughs> um, I just have the drone up. Chris's mission is to 3D map the volcano 
alongside the academic community. It's quite bizarre to see images of, of like main roads, yeah, stations and shops, and then just a wall of fresh material tumbling its way through, ripping everything apart. It's just like um, Earth's bulldozer just ploughing through. Completely destroying everything in its path. All around, hundreds of homes are being submerged. The destruction was rapid. In a matter of a week, we saw several lava flows down the hillside and it's completely destroyed several villages along the way. But the last thing we want to hear is, why did you build a house on a volcano? They know it's a volcanic island. That's not the point. There's, a, there's an element you are on a ticking time bomb. Catherine Gouffron's house is amongst many buried in lava and ash. When you recognize that it will not stop, it's like waiting someone who's dying and you know that he will die and every day is a little bit of hope, but finally there's no hope. And you need to, um, yeah, to turn the, the page in the book and say, okay, that's, that's it. There's nothing left. Right now, I'm afraid of the moment when I will go the first time to see how our house was, because everything is dead. That's it. There's no life in it. Catherine's home and her neighbor's properties near Las Manchas are entombed. So we are approaching the outskirts of Las Manchas here, and uh, as you can see, the ash cover is very thick. Valentin Troll is one of the few people allowed access to the area. And of course, there is grain size variations, very unpleasant to, to uh, touch. The ash is quite a phenomenon. I mean, the ash layers are really thick by now. One of my colleagues called it black snow or the devil's snow. Even the dead aren't safe. We're here at the cemetery in Las Manchas, and this is the lava that has intruded the cemetery only a few days ago. The team are inspecting a cemetery overrun by lava and ash when the culprit threatens to explode. So we are now uh, seeking shelter under the roof of a petrol station. Suddenly the ash fall picked up, the wind picked up, and the sulfur in the air became a real, a real sting. We were immediately, of course, putting our gas masks on and putting the safety equipment on. But uh, within minutes, we realized this is a very serious, serious thing. So we were just unlucky. But the wind is blowing a lot of ash and lapilli around, which is a bit unpleasant. The sulfur smell is actually quite intense. Uh, apparently, uh, concentrations are bearable. And the volcano's reawakening. Suddenly, the volcano turned really explosive. There was this big cloud, this bulbous cloud coming out, and uh, it was grey and brown and really intense. They have to get away. We knew that this was not a good place to be. Tiny particles of rock fly through the atmosphere. It's been like sand blasted, but uh, with very sharp sand fragments, basically little glass shards. But now it's very obvious. If you've seen them erupting, it is a really hellish situation. <laughs> Back in La Palma, the volcano's in a record 85th day. The eruptions continue in force. No one knows when the chaos will end. But in mid-December, a lull. A quiet volcanic phase allows new residents Andrew and Ailey to return home to see just how close the lava has come. It is now about 100 metres away from our house. This is the view down our front steps. All of our plants are looking quite buried. 
So I'm in my front garden just now, and the rock that you can see in the distance there is the lava flow. So it's maybe about 130 metres from our property, and it flows right the way downhill. It comes right round, covering just such a massive area. This is from the top of our garden, and this is the new landscape. But incredibly, the lavas run either side of their house. The neighbourhood has been swallowed up by a cooling flow of new rock. Everything is gone. It has been burned and buried. And that is all that there is to it. There's nothing that is recoverable. There's not a hint of your house having been there. It's very final. Very final. Their house is covered in volcanic ash that'll turn to cement if it rains. But it's completely altered the landscape. And we're currently working on clearing the driveway so that we can get some access with our, uh, with our car again. So I have my PPE on. The reason that we want to remove the ash from the roof isn't uh, aesthetic. It is actually a very porous material. It's small pieces of hollow rock and they absorb water really well. And basically that means that the, the weight of them increases. The Cumbre Vieja National Park is now much calmer, but seismic activity continues. Nearly 3,000 homes have been lost. Countless lives devastated. A new peninsula has been formed in the sea. Catherine's home is gone forever. Everything can change in one day, in one minute, in an hour. I think an experience that everyone who experienced uh, losing something knows. Andrew and Ailey still have no idea if their home will survive. I, I don't even have the words to articulate how terrifying that is. I'm really quite, quite frightened. It's been just this horrible state of limbo. No one knows what impact the ash will have on the climate. On the one side, it's humbling. One realizes how small humans are compared to these natural forces. On the other side, it's quite, it's quite invigorating because you have the privilege to be there and feel the earth trembling, to feel the rumble of the volcano, to witness such a natural spectacle is quite amazing. Volcanic ash and gases can reflect incoming solar radiation and absorb outgoing heat from the land cooling average temperatures. This seismic storm, just part of a long-term influence on our weather. Chemical eruptions themselves have a huge part to play in, in, in climate. The world itself kind of runs in patterns that are quite often peaks in weather. So they, they have overall control about what, what this climate does. The planet taking care of itself, it's a pressure release valve of a system that needs to stay stable for us to, to maintain an existence. Without volcanoes, there wouldn't be life on this planet. <laughs>